Hello everybody, today we're just going to be doing another quick sample library review. Uh, this time we're going to be focusing on the Olafur Arnold's Chamber Evolutions. Now as far as sample library goes, or sample libraries go, should I say, uh, you don't get a whole lot with this um, for the price, which I, I believe, oh, I can't even remember, I think it's sitting somewhere around 150 to 200 pounds. Um, it could be more, Spitfire did recently have a sale on all the Oliver Arnold stuff, so I managed to pick this up relatively cheap. Uh, again, I can't really remember. I'll I'll put it up on screen now. I'll put up some screenshots uh, of the website just so you can see what's involved, what you get, and the price that you'd be looking at paying. So, the whole premise of this library is it works on Spitfire's Evo Grid. Now, I'm not exactly too sure how all this works. I know that you input different things here. Um, you know, it's kind of like a little pegboard and then I think I think based on the kind of note groupings uh, you know it plays different techniques different variations but you'd have to look more into that yourself I just hit the randomize button because I'm lazy and very in particular uh, <laughs> I, I suppose I should really say that should I um, okay yeah so we'll start off with the chamber waves and we'll work our way up because the two main ones that you're going to be hearing here, sorry I accidentally hit a note there, the two main ones that you're going to be hearing here are the chamber waves and the chamber grid. Those are the two primary two primary patches that you're going to be working with within this library. It's not to say that the bases are useless because they certainly do have their uses, it's just I find it a bit bizarre how they are grouped separately. Uh, perhaps with the main size of the instrument you can't achieve many of the different articulations and techniques available in this library, but you have to ask a string player, unfortunately. So we'll start off with the chamber waves, which is probably the main selling point of this entire library, um, simply because just it's just phenomenal. So a lot of the time, film composers, game composers, or just composers in general, they find it annoying having to try and program in a wave sort of dynamic. So going from soft to loud, back to soft again. Um, I know I find that particularly irritating to do uh, perhaps you do perhaps you don't again maybe we're all just a bunch of really lazy people but this one here kind of circumvents this uh, circumvents this inconvenience whilst also providing a really nice clear sound so you've got three three main types of waves so you've got the normale or just normal uh, you've got the trem and then you've got the vibrato and you can see here if I uh, if I maybe stop hitting that hitting that one note, <laughs> as you can see here, you've, it's subdivided up into note lengths as well. Whether this is tempo synced or not, I'm not too sure. Uh, we'll give this a quick look now. So we're 120 BPM. I'll be, boost it up to like 211. Okay, so it doesn't seem like it's tempo synced. Um, so you know the symbols can you know might be a little bit confusing, but it is what it is. So we'll just start off with a couple of the normal ones. We'll just play around with a couple of chords so you can get a rough idea of how this sounds. So you can hear there just how nice and how rich of a sound this is. It really is it's just a phenomenal quality. Uh, I really wish this entire library would offer more, but for the price you're getting, you're getting extreme amounts of quality. So you've got the four main different uh, types of microphone. You've got the close mic, I'm not too sure which what ST is meant to be for. Uh, then you've got the tree mic, and then you've got the ambient mic as well. So we'll just change a couple of those over, make sure that loads in. Maybe we'll just reduce down the tree so we get just a quick listen of the ambient mic.
and of course you can change around the um the different levels on all of these as well just to really craft yourself a good unique sound to it so before we move on to a couple of these uh, these other options here i'm just going to test out the reverb this is this isn't really something which i've had much chance to use yet So yeah, of course, as per usual, it just sounds, it sounds breathtaking. It sounds absolutely phenomenal. So if we, should we move on to, I'll try that one again, shall I? If we move on to uh, the trem, just here, it just offers a little bit of a different texture. I just want to add here as well, that the mod wheel does control dynamics. So if you want a really quiet, Well, if you want to be really experimental, you can program in the wave uh, and then have the wave itself. Just a bit of a weird contemporary idea. Uh, <laughs> so we'll try a couple of these short ones. And we will move on to vibrato. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a bit of a clear idea as to what the Chamber Waves is all about. Personally, I find it a very usable patch. Um, maybe it does have some sort of limited usage, you know, maybe it's not as flexible as you might need it to be. But if you're looking at just a very basic wave swelling sound, something for like building atmospherics, or possibly even to transition in between scenes, that could it could work absolute wonders for you there, I think. So we'll have a look at the chamber grid. So I briefly touched upon the concept of this earlier. Um, you've got the Evo grid, which Spitfire sort of pioneered in a sense. And you've got this little button up here and you can randomize it into each of these different sections. So each, uh, each section, I think they're divided up into columns, is a different color. And each one of those represents a different section of articulations and techniques so for example the yellow section here is subtles so you've got the more subtle evolutions so these aren't going to be as radical perhaps so we'll just start off here maybe maybe with a bit of a high-pitched drone And again, these um, these here are controlled by the mod wheel uh, dynamics. I mean. So as you can hear there, you get this really grand, big, evolving sound, and there are so many possibilities just with this Evo grid. You can input the different stuff yourself. It doesn't really tell you 
what articulations what so you know there's not really it's not too much feedback uh not too much feedback there but if you go in here so for example randomize with thrills so you get a much more radical and a much more energetic sort of uh evolution if you go with episodic Just kind of ups that ante a little bit with dissonance. And then randomize only visible, so I imagine it only inputs different stuff for the sections that you can see, and then randomize only in column. So I'm assuming this one here. Yeah, it's okay. So I'm not I'm not exactly too sure what that one what one's meant to be doing here. But I guess it just randomizes it in a particular column. Again, same as before, you get the close, um whatever this one is. <laughs> then you get the tree mic and the ambient mic as well, or the atmospheric. You can change the attack. Um, obviously, you can ch you can change the attack decay, sustain, release. You can change the reverb. So if you want more, well, if you want more reverb. There's the delay. And tape saturation. that one there was just kind of a bit of a cavalcade of random sounds so yeah um the the chamber grid as well it's re it's more geared towards the more contemporary composer so perhaps somebody kind of scoring dramas similar to um broadchurch the drama that Ulf Arnold's scored you know i can very much see a lot of the sound here being used for the score to that so think kind of along those lines if you're looking at doing something big, cinematic, uh, symphonic, perhaps this isn't really the library for you. Um, but if you're looking for something that would be perfect to go under dialogue or to offer a more somber and delicate, sort of an intimate sound, by, by all means, this is a fantastic library to get. So then, we'll just move on to the basis waves real quick. I'm, I'm just going to quickly go through these. We'll look at the trams. Okay. You know, just try those with the dynamics up as well so we can really hear them. And the bases grid. Okay, so you'll notice here there's not a randomized one here, so you will have to go and input these things separately. So I'll just select a couple of random ones. So maybe if you're looking for that kind of low, broody, m moody sort of bass drone, perhaps this could be a good option for you. Um, in terms of the bass's waves, I'm a bit puzzled, to be honest. I don't really know why they couldn't just combine the bases and the chamber patches together. I think that would it would offer a lot more kind of flexibility to have the entire entire range in one patch. Because I know the amount of times where I go to do chords and I'm doing octaves in the left hand to get the bases and cellos, and with the chamber waves you can't really do that. So it impedes on the workflow a little bit, but that's only really a complaint if you are as objectively lazy as me. Which is quite lazy. So, overall, 
do I do I do I think it's worth the money? Um, well, if I can remember how much it cost, <laughs> I could um, I, I could definitely give you a a solid answer for that. No, but se seriously, the quality of the sounds on this library are phenomenal. Um, I know that's a word that I tend to throw around a lot. I know I know it's I know the word phenomenals being used in a lot of my videos recently, but the sounds are just they're just of a really great quality. I'm not too sure what else to say about the library. It's it's just it's just a good library to have. It'll definitely be a boost for your more contemporary sounds. It'll definitely offer you a lot of different variation. I'd probably say one of the biggest cons for it maybe is the fact you know you you just don't get too much. If you look at the composer's toolkit, for example, you get a wide array of um, synths and different sort of presets and stuff like that. Whereas this one here, you kind of just go in blind. You have to really know how to work with it. You have to really appreciate what it's for. You have to know what it's for, what it can do, and accept its limitations. If you do that, this this library will sing for you. It will do absolute wonders. Um, in fact, I'm using it in a couple of projects currently, which, as much as I would love to show you, I'm uh, I'm I'm not allowed. But yeah, I think it's I think it's worth the money. I think I spent about 150 to 200 pounds for this on sale. I think regularly it's retailing for about 250 pounds, which is probably a bit steep for this. If you're a student, you do get a 30% discount, which comes to 174 pound and 30 pence, I believe. I'm not too sure how much this costs for people in the States or across the channel. But yeah, just to conclude, a fantastic library, excellent sounds, perfect for the more contemporary composers or just for somebody who just needs that something different in their collection just to give them inspiration. Um, I mentioned yesterday in my VR Harmonic review that I could just sit with that library and I could just spend hours and hours and hours playing around creating melodies and just doing random stuff with it. I say like the chamber waves or the chamber grid have a similar sort of effect. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say I could play around with them for as long as the VR Harmonic cello but I can definitely sit here and get lost in the different sounds. So yeah, if you're thinking of getting this library, absolutely go for it, it would be great. The one thing I wouldn't recommend doing if you did get this library is getting the regular evolutions uh, library from Spitfire. I made that mistake and there's not really much difference between them. So it's not really worth your money. I got the normal evolutions library because I thought there'd be some good solo string options on there and it's, it's good. But it's just kind of made redundant if you get this one. So get one or the other, I'd say. Um, preferably this one, because you get the chamber waves. So I'll just play a couple more chords just on the chamber waves. Just so you get a final idea of kind of what it sounds like.
right so that'll be it for today's video um if you've watched all the way through to the end once again as always i do massively massively appreciate it um i hope this video has helped make you have an informed decision um if you do get this library do let me know i'm always interested to see what people are creating what music's being composed so with that i will leave it there have a fantastic day and i will see you in the next one